Hey you guys, it's your girl Dash coming back to you for Real Takes. Uh, today I'll be doing a review to Siren Episode 5, uh, Curse of the Starving Class. Uh, this was a great episode. I enjoyed this um, in so many ways that we'll discuss in the review. Um, before I get started with this particular review, um, prior to that you saw the scenes where of course Ren was starting to deteriorate and she needed, you know, to stay. She wanted to stay and help Ben and Maddie locate her sister. She didn't want to go back into the water. She wanted to go together, you know, so they could be together and then go go their separate ways. Now they know that she needed to get in that water because if you could see her skin, it was just it was just really awful the way she was looking. But of course, they ended up finding her sister. Chris, of course, was able to um, get out of that facility, whichever. Um, unbeknownst to him, the woman he's with is not a nurse. She's actually um, Ren's sister, playing the name now Donna, because she took on the name, likelihood of that when she took her the woman's nurse um, garb with her little um, key on it with her face. Well, her carb key. So needless to say, she does get back in contact with Donna when she sees her walking across the street, whatever, going through the force to get to the water. And they're together, they bond, of course, they leave together. Now, before that, there's a scene where Maddie and Ben give her the necklace with a track, and she's like, I will come back. So, hence, present day, it shows it's been about a month later. It shows a scene of Chris inside of a nice little um, bar setting, and he's drinking, and it shows the guy named Alden Decker shows up, the guy who was in charge of the facility, showing up, and he's like, you know, what do you want? Because he makes a comment, he's like, you look like you're doing well, and of course he is. Now that he's home, he's healthy, whatever, because it's not like they were doing him any favors, being that he was being held against his will and drugged almost on a daily basis. So, you know, don't particularly have any love for Alden because I think you knew what they were doing and what you were doing with him was just completely wrong. So, whatever. So, he lets him know, you know, what do you, what do you want? He's like, that woman, she was a psycho. I don't know anything about her. He just thinks she's a nurse. The guy clearly knows that he doesn't know that this woman is actually a mermaid. So, that kind of works against his advantage. So, there's no point in them even entertaining him anymore. He just let Chris tell him what he knew and it was really nothing. So, it showed him kind of going off. Now, from there... It shows, of course, Maddie and Ben kind of going through their regular routine, but she's feeling like things have changed a little bit where they're kind of not getting back to them. They're being together. And he has to basically let her know, no, there's nothing wrong. I'm fine, whatever, and all that. Then also, of course, talking about them losing contact through the tracker with um, Ren and uh, Donna going off together. So from there, it just kind of just shows them trying to reconnect a little bit, whatever. And um, from there... It does show a scene where um, he gets a call um, from his mom. She's like, um, oh, it's your mom. He's like, no, he's not going to do it right now, whatever. So then all of a sudden she calls her. Never realized she had her number. And she's like, you know, hi, you know, I like to, you know, touch base with you. Matter of fact, let's have lunch, you know, the next day around two. So she's like, okay, great. You know, he's like, oh, okay, well, you do that, get a cocktail, get a nice cocktail, whatever. I'll be honest with you. I can see he keeps his parents at bay, but just little, little shady little comments like that does not help the situation because it's like you know your parents are trying to reach out to you but when you see the um, moment between maddie and um his uh, mother elaine do you kind of understand what's really going on there but um from there of course there's a sign happens where the thing starts up again for the tracking and it shows they're on their way back so of course they get down to the beach and they see their fins of course as you all remember from a couple episodes ago it showed um, the scene of the fin. Well, actually, the last episode was shows Alden Decker looking at the fin on the ground inside of the facility, and when he touches it, it just turns into some sort of like smoky debris that falls within his hands, or whatever. So I actually liked that scene when I saw that because I didn't expect that to happen. I just thought that the fin would come off eventually, but it would not deteriorate. So they realize they must be somewhere around. Of course, it shows that they have made it towards the high school, and they see, which was funny to me, um, scene of them going and seeing some t-shirts whatever and all that it had like the um logo for the school mascot or whichever so of course you know donna doesn't want to be there she's like i've been trying to get away from these people i don't want to be have nothing to do with some of these humans you know they were you know basically doing tests on me whatever and of course runs like there's some good people whatever come with me put this on and she's trying to navigate and she's like first i want to do it. and she's like we have good people they're trying to help us whatever we need food or whatever so in the midst of that she ends up going with her at first so they go to the um biology or whatever lab place that they do for you know checking over you know the seagulls or whichever they break in and of course within a few minutes it shows that um maddie 
and Ben show up. And then, of course, you know, Maddie goes and hugs and all that. And, of course, Donna doesn't know how to feel. And she kind of takes a couple of their devices. I think it might have been the laptop in her hand. And that throws it all. And they're trying to slow her down. Calm down. And she's like, you know, you want to be with them more than me, whatever. We need to get into the water and go. And she's like, we can't go. We need help. We need help. You know, we have no food. We have no food, whichever. So they get into a little argument, dis disagreement, her and Ren. And kind of have like a little fighting scene because she picks up Ben and pushes him up against the wall. And that was an interesting scene, whatever and all. And she takes takes her off of her and they get into a little bit of a scuffle. He takes a life flare and kind of diff diffuses it a little bit. That's when Donna runs out and she's just, she, of course, causes a little cut or bruise on Ren. And Maddie tries to help her with the situation. She explains to her, you know, there's no food. And it's like, there's a reason for that. Hence the fact that lately... His friends, Chris, Calvin, and Xander have been, you know, above and beyond bringing in lots of different types of fish, you know, whatever, you know, they can can get, you know, and they're making a good profit of it. But there's more to that story. So from there, when he um, decides to look into a bin, he decides to reach out to his father. It's the perfect time to reach out to him, not realizing his dad does not know that he has a bigger reasoning for coming back on board to be a part of the family is because he wants to know why all of a sudden, you know, these guys are, you know, getting all the food, whatever, and all come to find out. Alden and, of course, the military guy, Admiral Harrison, are up to something. They are trying to act like they're a part of some bogus company called Coastal Mills to basically have them go out there, get all the fish, get all the whatever food they can out of within the water, which is their means of eating and what they need to survive in the water. And they don't have any, and basically they have almost nothing left. And this is causing them because that means they feel like the mermaids are going to come up to, you know, to, to the surface and come out, whatever, so they can expose themselves and then they can have, you know, their chance to kidnap them again. Now, when I say that, there's a scene where you see out and inside of the new facility that they're putting together where they're making these nice tanks and he speaks to one of the doctors and the doctor's like, you know, is there a way for you to put some sort of type of serum inside that we can use as opposed to doing injections so it can be useful within inside of the water and within inside the tank. And she's like, I think this will be better. This will cause us not to have the same situation we had at the last facility. And he's down for that. Now, um, from there, you know, that's when, of course, Ben realized, yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to, you know, flush them out by taking their resources of what they need for means to eat. Now, moving on, it shows, of course, them getting in contact with Helen because now Dawn is out there and she's on a prey where she needs food. So she goes into one of the dock areas that belongs to, you know, Ben's family and opens up one of the crates and starts eating the fish. And, of course, one of the guys comes across them. I think it's called Big Tim or something. He couldn't even get her upper hand on her. He was scared of her. He tries to leave on his little gurney thing. And she gets like a best at him. But by then, he causes a little alarm to go off, which hurts her ears, and she runs away. So that's when the next day shows, of course, Ben running to his dad, you know, find out what's going on. He's like, oh, yeah, something happened. Some person, it looked like a female, whatever, tried, you know, to open one of the crates to eat the food, whichever, and all that. And can you believe it? She, you know, you know, was trying to hurt him. And they're like, Big Tim, really? That's shocking, you know, and of course he knows who it is and he knows the amount of strength that Ren and now Donna has, so she's not to be played with. So basically he uses his time to bond with his father. Of course he bonds with the secretary and he uses his time to go in his father's office and that's how we come across him knowing about Costa Mills. And from there, it kind of just shows um, Helen coming into contact with them, wanting to know what's going on, why are they back, and then that's when she realizes what they're trying to do, and they kind of bring her up to speed with what's happening, whichever. Now, there's a scene where Ben meets up with um, Xander to talk, and they're just talking about, you know, the guy, Alden, coming up to Chris, trying to inquire about something, like he didn't do anything. He's like, yeah, he probably doesn't realize he's a threat, but now Ben knows there's more to the story, but he won't kind of tell Xander what's going on because they really believe um, they were mermaids because even Chris shows up at one of their boats asking for a job back, and he makes a statement to him, you know, I don't want to talk about this, you know, it was some crazy one, whatever, and all, but Xander knows is more, they think it's mermaids, so he's still not buying it, whatever, it is what it is, he just wants a job back, he brought a peace offering, you know, a good little bottle or something, you know, for later, whichever, for them to, you know, sting their sours with some something drinks, just not to think about, you know, what they've been through, whichever, but it shows, of course, you know, Xander still is not fully feeling like things are done. He feels like there's more to happen, more to come, and he's rightfully so. So the other scene um, I enjoyed was the scene happening with Elaine and Maddie talking and her trying to flush out her son, always feeling like he needs to be someone's savior, of course, for her, her 
his mother. It was because of the accident that happened where he was doing research to find a way to help her with her issue where she could no longer walk. Looking into doctors, anything that could deal with spinal, you know, you know, spinal injury, how it can be, you know, repaired, whatever and all that. He did it for like a year. He was encompassed in it. Now she must feel like he's moved on to the next one. And that was kind of just such, so disrespectful on her part because... Why does it have to be him saving someone? He could just be wanting to date Maddie because he likes her. And he's in love with her, whichever. But, you know, her mother wants to always think of some type of damsel in distress. Yeah, you're his mother. He really wanted to do what he can. It's nothing to do with every time he comes into contact with some female. It's him trying to save them because they need saving. You know, I was so offended when she said that because Maddie had to shut that down at the end when she got a call. to like, oh, it's my son. She's like, it's something else, whatever and all. And yes, your son, when he's involved with something, he wants to see it through to the end. You know, granted, it didn't happen with her. But you can't assume that type, you know, of, you know, feelings about each and every person that comes into contact with your son from the female aspect. That's not right. And that's not fair. So I really didn't understand what her, she thought she was trying to prove by bringing this up in a conversation. You're trying to get to know the woman that's dating your son. You might want to do it a better way. This is not going to bode well with your, you know, son. When he finds out what you talked about, what you said, that's going to push him away from her more. He's going to open himself up to his dad because he's trying to get information from him. But the rest of that aspect, you know, even his brother, but her, his mom, a little bit too much. Now I can see why he said the cocktail and all. Because at first I wasn't giving the benefit because I thought that was kind of a little, you know, poorly on his part to kind of throw his girlfriend into that situation, making her feel like, oh, oh I don't know if I should do this lunch date by saying that. But now it's like, yeah, she would have needed quite a few cocktails one wouldn't have been enough that's just my personal opinion on that part and the last part i will say that i wanted to say i knew it i knew it i knew it i knew it helen eventually goes to the beach because she has an idea where she thinks donna could be hiding because they're trying to locate you know her and she finds her hiding up under a little area within the beach whatever and she brings her you know a little peace offering some some fish and you know, some food and Donna, of course, her back's turned. She turns around. And at first, she's kind of hesitant. But then she, you know, shows it to her. And she takes it from her. And she's like, you know, I understand what you're going through. You know, I totally understand, you know. You know, we just want to help you, whichever and all. Because you know why? Because I'm one of you. When she said that, I literally, my mouth dropped. I, I knew it. I said a couple of episodes ago, um, just the way she took a shining to Ren when she first saw her. Then when she was trying to talk to her, but then she left. And then, of course, Ben turned around in the truck with her and asked her, did she talk to her? Then, uh, of, of course, when she came back into her shop and she was looking at all the little pictures of the mermaids, whatever, and all that, she just kind of filling her up with the part when she was helping Ren with her skin and she saw her leg. I kept thinking that was the same situation she was dealing with. It's just not... Um, as excessive because it was a small area or whatever, but she wanted to use something about the immune system, whichever and all that as, as a smoke screen. Cause of course, Ren doesn't understand what she's talking about yet, but now, yeah, I think Helen's going to help Donna to understand a little bit more. Definitely. Um, her wording, her speech, her speaking will get probably a little bit better. So we can understand what she's saying more in the upcoming episodes, but that is all I needed to hear. I, I knew it because she's very strong willed about that. That's why I said in a couple episodes prior as well, I want some flashbacks with her. I want to see some of her past because the way that people treat her, not to say they know her secret, but just the way she has been. And when that stuff happened in the past with her, his ancestors, Ben's ancestors, you know, was she around at that time? How much, how much older is she? You know, I really want to understand that. And this makes me even more intrigued with the show. I've already enjoyed the show, but this just adds an extra layer and this makes it more exciting for me to watch the show and just learn more. And that lets you know she is definitely keeping more secrets of whichever. Oh, yeah, I'm here for it. And I wonder what would happen if she went into that war. Can she not, you know, turn into mermaid anymore? Because she says more and more out, she can stay out longer. So that means she doesn't have the ability to turn anymore because she's been on land for so long just so many questions you guys i could go on and on about this but you know what that's what i'm gonna leave the episodes to do but i can discuss it with you guys you can comment below you guys let me know what you all think you know about this episode you enjoyed it how do you feel about that little reveal with helen at the end of the episode and again as i say i look forward to seeing you guys on the next review you guys take care